This episode of the Swiftcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. They are world class hand roasted micro batch coffee, which means that that coffee is fresh roasted after you ordered, not sitting on a shelf for for who knows how long. They are fair trade certified USD organic and integrity is their core value. Uh, coffee comes in K-Cup, gift cards available, and free shipping over $50. Be sure to find out all that they have to offer over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Uh, the short answer to that Buckeye Esquire is yes. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Young is a father. Which makes sense. He's been at Ohio State since what, two thousand four. He 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 gets that joke now. The, For first we gave he, that joke to J.T. Barrett, then we then we gave that joke Craft. to, to Aaron Craft. Craft. Now now that joke belongs to Kyle Young. Yes, it is. Easy. And and like Kyle Young had a baby in a sense, right? Like. He he had a baby in that, like, he as a person who is a partner with another person uh, and they as a couple had a baby. <laughs> he he that is not why he missed time earlier in the season. It wasn't due to pregnancy. <laughs> All right, Jared, hopefully this cough comes down in control here. So let's. <laughs> Let's go oh yeah, that's right. It would have been it would have been Kraft than J T Barrett than 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 Young. I don't know. They listen. Kraft and J T Barrett started at the school before I was born, so it's hard to keep track of. Really. What's the movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger gets pregnant? Um, I wanted to say twins, but that's obviously not right. Um, what is the name of that movie? I wanted to say Mr. Mom, but that's a Michael Keaton movie. Ah, uh, you know what, we, you, we, we got to start the podcast. When you, when, when, when are you guys down in the live chat are going to have to look it up? Cause I honestly can't remember. Junior. Junior. Kyle already looked it up. Look it up, Kyle. Look it up. A uh, kindergarten cop is where he had a bunch of other people's kids. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get started. Yeah, like a surrogate. He gave birth to 20 kindergartners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? You know, um, watch Ohio State play basketball. What for us is today. It's going to be a couple days ago because I think this is our Tuesday episode. This will be our Tuesday episode. So it's a couple days ago for everyone else. But um, yeah, Ohio State defeats Maryland. Yeah. All right. It's a Big Ten win. It's a Big Ten win. Uh, you, you can't. You can't. You can't look too too. I mean, I Maryland's Maryland, right? We don't we don't we don't got to we don't got to pretend like this is per beating Purdue, right? We we don't got to mm -hmm. do that. But it was a game that Ohio State should have won convincingly, and did, and did. Yep, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, another um, win in the column there. Uh, you, you take any wins at this point right now. <clears throat> They're sitting in the I think in the top quarter right now in the in the Big Ten right now, which is where you want to be. You want to be in that top three, four spots right now. That way you get a, a buy or two buys in there going into the the Big Ten um, um, tournament. So yeah, that I mean they got they got some winnable games down the stretch here, but we'll talk about that later on. That we're, we're going to talk here about Maryland. House State wins 82 to 67. House State shooting the ball very well on 
pretty much every part here, uh, minus the free throws, free throws 64%, but either way, 50, almost 51% from the field, 42% from the three-point line. We haven't seen that kind of performance in quite a while from this Ohio State team. Uh, they had a lot of open looks. Um, again, like it's, it's Maryland. Uh, Maryland's on like a three or four game slide right now in the big 10. Um, Buckeye Zach asks, could we finally win the big 10? I, I mean, Purdue's there and we saw how, yeah, I mean, they, they match up terribly against Purdue. Um, so Ideally, I think like ideally it would have to be a path that doesn't include Purdue. And I'm not saying Ohio State can't beat Purdue because they can. Ohio State's good enough to beat Purdue, but they're not good enough to beat Purdue consistently. Like if it was a if it was an NBA style playoff game, like Purdue would win in a seven game matchup. Now, Ohio mm -hmm. State could maybe win two of those games along the way. But maybe three of those games along the way, uh, depending upon it, how, how well they're shooting. But they're, they're not winning a seven-game matchup against Purdue. So, like, you know, any given Sunday or whatever day they'd have to be ha happen to be playing, Ohio State could beat Purdue. But it's just like I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever bet money on it. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, yeah, this game here, um, I apologize. I didn't get to watch the games, but I did get to watch the um, the replays and – and everything, so I'm going to rely heavily on you for watching the whole game here, though, Jared. But looking looking at the stats and looking at the the quick game run through that I I watched here, yeah, Ohio State just overpowered Maryland here, and as, as they should with a, a depleted Maryland team here. Uh, EJ Liddell had 24 points. He had 11 rebounds. He got his double double in this game here. Early on, Zed Key, Zed, Zed yeah. Key really started the game off really strong for Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio State uh, started this because I know it was a thing we talked about during our last Loop Soup episode um, where, you know, Ohio State lost to Purdue. Uh, in that game, we saw Ohio State um, not start Arns, which we had a conversation about, you know, would Ohio State, you know, was that a matchup situation or was that a an actual change in the starting lineup. And he once again, does not start here. Um, and then he, at that point also like, isn't even in the first round of, of substitutions. Ohio state started in a three, was it, I believe it was a three guard look in this game. Um, I believe it, uh, the starting lineup, I believe would have been um, key Liddell Wheeler um, I'm I'm blanking. Uh, just scroll down a little bit, Jared. You're, you're <laughs> almost there. You're almost uh, there. You Jared. know, let me let me put, let me go to the box score. Let me go to the box score. Uh, Michi and Brenham. So there yeah, that, that they went they went three guard look. Uh, and I I liked it. Now again, a lot of that's going to be matchup dependent, right? So. Yep. You know, you, you you definitely went with a smaller look here. It, it sort of helped to open things up down below. Obviously, you have three guards on the outside. It, it, and then EJ Liddell is just sort of EJ, EJ Liddell at this point, right? Like, whatever position he's playing, because he can play outside, he can play inside, um, really helped, helped to open things up for Zed Key down below and absolutely took advantage of that. Now, he, he ends the game with 14 points, which I think is it's like right where you want him, right? Um, I, I, yeah. I would say that's about where you want him to be. Um, basically didn't miss, went six for seven. Had a, like, like Kyle said, had a really good start to the game and, and kept going. Yeah, I think, I think on three straight possessions, he, he scored. It was like three, three straight or three of four possessions. He he scored, he scored six of his fourteen points there. But yeah, just really starting off strong there, and yeah, I, I think if you can get about 10, 14 points from Zed Key, that's that's a good get. That's a good game for for him. Yeah, and and one of the things you get in this game, and like I wonder if not starting two games in a row, not even being, like I said, in the first round of substitutions, 
is, is that is did we maybe spark something underneath Arns here, or was this him? Because like Ohio, if if Arns can be the Arns who we've seen him be in the past, that's a huge, huge get for Ohio State, right? Like yeah. we've been very, very critical of Arns on this podcast, but if we can get this version of him, if this is the Justin Arns that could show up from here on out, that's enormous for Ohio State. You know, he shoots four for seven from behind the arc, scores 14 points. Because Arns is sort of, he, he's, you know, he's sort of a, what, he's a small, he's pretty small by forward standards, kind of plays like a forward-ish, guard-ish, somewhere in between role when he's out there, especially if he's out there with Zed Key and EJ Liddell. Um, yeah. They're, they're typically the two bigger forwards doing the big forward things. It is almost unfair. I am like, it's, it's, it's Ohio state could really, really, really go deep and compete. If this is the Arns that shows up on a regular basis, Kyle, he had a block shot. He, he had an amazing <laughs> sequence. He blocks the shot, runs down on transition, gets the pass, sidesteps the defender, shoots an open three. I was like, where's that guy? I love that guy. That's the guy I like. Well, it didn't even show in the um, in the stats here that he got a block. Uh, then he got robbed. <laughs> if the stats don't say he got a block, he got robbed. I'm gonna need yeah, to talk talk to the statistician. This is the first time. It's the first time since almost exactly a month ago, back on uh, January 6th, that he shot over 25 percent from the three point line. Here, shot 57 percent, four for seven. 14 points, 14 points, which is the most he's had this, this year in 2022. Is it really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, 2022. I was about to say, cause okay. Not this season though. Not this in, season. In, in, in the, not this season. Yeah. Okay. In, okay. In, I was about to in say. the 10 games that, in the 10 games a, that they've played. I was about, he had a really year. good game against Seton Hall, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he had 17 against Seton Hall. Yeah. He had, uh, 16 against, uh, ooh, I always, always miss. Yeah, uh, 16. Well, on, on my side, your audio completely broke up. What did you say? I said on against Towson, he had oh. 16. Yeah. So it's, um, if, if this, if this is the orange that can show up on a regular basis, that's obviously enormous for Ohio state. Um, because I think ideally he's in your starting five. If you can get the old Arns back, he's in your starting five. Mm -hmm. And at that point, what it's Liddell key Arns Brenham Wheeler. Now that being said, and since I brought up the Seton hall game again, this was Maryland, right? This is a, this is a game on a, a team that's on a multi-game slide in the big 10. We've seen Arns perform well against bad opponents this year. And I'm not, I don't, I don't I, I, he had a good game. He had a good game and I'm not, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna crap on him for that. Um, but yeah. the Seton Hall game, I think is the only good game he's had again. It's a good opponent this year. And quite frankly, Maryland doesn't, doesn't, does not turn that dial for me. Does not qualify as a, is a good opponent for, for me to put another check in that box for him. Um, but Again, like like we've been saying on the show before, it doesn't always have to be the same guy, right? If Ohio State can get two guys to score, you know, 12, 14, 15, 16 points on top of Liddell getting 20-ish, and then, you know, of course, several other people getting seven and an eight and blah, blah, blah. But like that, that's, that's, that's the key to the success of this team is making sure that there is a, another guy or two who is also scoring in a game. And again, they have a large number. I think, I think this is a very deep Ohio state team. They have a large number of guys to choose from. You know, I feel like last week we were talking about Brenham and we were talking about Kyle young being those offensive guys, but that, that, that was not the case in this game. 
But that's fine because this time it was EJ, or well, obviously it was EJ Liddell's turn. It's always EJ Liddell's turn. But Zed Key and, mm -hmm. and Justin Orange's turn in this game to be like those two other scorers. Yeah. I think you know, uh, Buckeyes, or excuse me, Buckeye Squire says, I think Brenham consistently between 10 to 15 is the key to making a run. I I would I would welcome that. I would absolutely welcome that. I would really like it. Again, if we're talking about we're talking about EJ getting 20-ish, you know, 18 to 24. And then we're talking about I I've said that I would like to, if there's gonna be two other guys score, you know, 12 to 16. I'd really, really, really like it if one of those guys was a consistent person. And I think Brennan really can be that consistent person. Um, so I, I agree with you, Esquire, but I think as long as it's two people, I really don't mind too bad if those two people are on rotation. Because again, they, they yeah. have the depth. They have the depth to, okay, oh, uh, Brenham's not going to be a scorer of this game. Let's Zed Key is going to be a scorer of this game. Oh, Zed Key's not going to be a scorer of this game. Justin Arns is going to be a scorer for us this game. They they have that sort of depth and that sort of flexibility to pull that stuff off. But I've said it before and I'll say it again. I would love it if Ohio State had like a designated second scorer. Which is why I get excited when Arns looks like he's quote unquote back. Yeah. Yep. Another another key thing that I think why Ohio State's looking a lot better uh, so far here, Jared. Buckeye I Esquire, absolutely that messes with the game planning. Absolutely it does. That's why I would that's why I want it to be consistently I want there to be a second consistent scorer. Someone who you can actually rely on outside of EJ Liddell. But if the alternative is uh, you know, score by committee, then that's better than not having a second scorer, period. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared. I got a um I got a good stat on why Ohio State's playing um, really well. I know they've lost a few games, uh, but Purdue I'll give you a good stat. Tough, but I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a good stat on why Ohio State's performing really well after our ad break from the Iron oh, Bean Company. Kyle with the tease that was Kyle that was that was top tier podcast teasing is what that was. The Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle already told you, Marine owned, veteran owned. Uh, coffee company based out of Ohio. Um, uh, we we looked at we looked at some of our Nordic coffees last time. Let's let's maybe jump into some flavored coffees. Let's take a let's take a venture over into flavored coffee area. Kyle, never had an Irish cream. Let's see, we got the Irish cream, uh, a flavor concoction of Irish whiskey, coffee, cream, and sugar. Now captured in our Irish cream flavored coffee remarkably mellow cream warming mixture that is greatly enhanced by the flavors in our premium roasted coffee uh let's see it's by the way just because i it, there, there's no actual sugar in it i just want to just like it has a sugary flavor it has a sweet flavor to it but there's no actual sugar in it it's still sugar free just want to make sure to point that out if that one's not uh that one's not getting you excited there's the grog uh, that's specifically called the Dylan's Grog. Um, coffee combines the flavors of butterscotch rum, uh, just a hint of vanilla, roasted daily, and using only premium Brazilian beans. The Highlander Grog um, flavored coffee is like all the other coffees over at Iron Bean Coffee Company, USDA certified, organic, fair trade certified, uh, to ensure you're getting both the best possible quality coffee beans, but also, you know, the most moral possible coffee beans. And again, a lot of these uh, flavored coffees have uh, sweetness to them, but calorie free and sugar free. So if, if that's a thing you are concerned about, you know, don't don't let the description of things like vanilla or butterscotch uh make you go oh no but I, I i don't do sugar i don't do sugar either i'm with you on that um although there, i just want to say one thing though the dylan's grog does come with a caution uh quote caution 
Uh, you may be talking like a pirate, a Scotsman, or an Irish boxer after consuming. So, like, if you have any meetings or something, maybe just just be aware of that. So, like, if you have a meeting-heavy day, may, maybe not the Dylan Scrog that day. You might want to go with the Irish cream on those days. But if you're if you're going to not be in meetings and you're just going to have some some you time, some you time to yourself, then go ahead and get the Dylan's Grog and talk like a pirate to your heart's content. So uh, you can find your new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Welcome, Kabuto. <laughs> I, hey, fun stat here. Kabuto, this is here, my Jared. favorite running gag of the moment. All right, fun stat here, Jared. You ready? Yeah. We're going to go way, way back to the first of the year, January 2nd. Okay. I'm going to talk about, going to talk about turnovers for Ohio State. Going turnovers. We're going to go way, way back. Turnovers. All We're right, to, um, here we go. One, one, thing, one, one, thing, one thing we talked about with Ohio State, uh, especially, especially earlier on, was just turnovers. Ohio State just ha having too many turnovers. Well, right. Nebraska. When you when you go turnovers. through this, Kyle. By the way, can you include when the uh, COVID break was when they had to take that long layoff? Um, how long? Um, oh no, that was um, this was as soon as they got back. This is as soon as they got back. Gotcha. That's right. Because the yeah. Okay. You know what? No, you said at the beginning of the year, or like the yes. actual calendar yep. year. Not this is yep. the second time we've done this this episode. Yes, January you said, 2nd. Okay, and you know what? This time it was definitely my fault because you definitely said January 2nd. So this one's on so me. Against, against Nebraska, 16, 16 turnovers. Indiana, 15. Nebraska, 14. Wisconsin, 11. Penn State, 9. Uh, Uwe Pooey, 8. Uh, Minnesota, Minnesota six, Purdue six, and then Minnesota. Uh, double checking there, six. Yeah. Uh, so it went from 16 and it's constantly going down to six they, right now. And here's the thing, and I'm not going to ask you to look it up, but they had a similar thing from like the beginning of the season. And then it got better and better and better and better. And then they hit that COVID break and they didn't play a basketball game for something like three weeks. And then they came back real rusty and we're turning the ball over again. And of course, like if you go back to the beginning of the season, again, there was a lot of experience on the, on the court, but a lot of guys who hadn't necessarily played together with like Wheeler um, and just trying to figure out like who their five was and trying to get them to play cohesively. They started to figure that out. Then COVID break happens and then they, they regressed, but like Wheeler is quietly turned into Kyle. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And then I'm going to duck. Cause I might, I might catch some resistance on this. Wheeler is now the second best player on the team. I, I I got I got some more I, stats for you, Jerry. Can I, I got some more can stats. I, can I say that? Can I can I can I say that Wheeler's the second best player on the team right now? Ohio State, the first time Ohio State got single digits in turnovers. Yeah. January 16th against Penn State. Okay. They yeah, had like, nine. Or even uh, no, on all uh, no, all the other games against Akron, Bowling Green, uh, Towson, all of those, they were like they were averaging around 13, 14, 15 turnovers per game. Like it was, it was, and before they had the three week layoff. Kabuto says it's Brenham. Uh, I think Brenham will be. Uh, I don't know that he is right now. Uh, I think mm. when it's all said and done, like if we're looking back on this team 10 years from now, we might look at Brenham and say, well, he was the best player on that team. Um, but as of like this day, I don't think he is. He's just not consistent enough yet. He's a true freshman. It's fine. But yeah, he's not consistent enough yet. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, anything else about this um this basketball team? Uh, what you've seen so far? What you would like to see Ohio State do moving forward? Uh, they got they got what is it two, four, six, eight more games in the regular season before the uh, Big Ten uh, tournament here. Anything else that you're wanting to see from this team? Lane says shoot more than 50% from three. Like you take 50%. 50% from three is good. I, I, I think it's I take it's a I lot take that, 30, I take 33, 35%. I know. No, that's not what this not for this team to be successful. No. They they're gonna need to shoot. This team will need to shoot. Uh if if they had if they had like an elite center down below, like I tell you, if Zed Key were like three to four inches taller, I would agree with you, Kyle. If Ohio State had a true center, I would agree with you. But this team, this team needs to shoot better than than that. Uh, they need to be able to shoot. Um, Buckeye Esquire they, says, I could shooting? allow a discussion. This is going back to me saying uh, Wheeler. I can allow a discussion of second most important. Wheeler being the second most important player on the team. And quite frankly, Buckeye Esquire, you're probably right. I think that's what I was trying to say. And I think your phrasing is probably is probably more accurate to what I was meaning to say, as opposed to saying like best. So you're 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 probably right on that one, Buckeye Esquire. Mm -hmm. They are shoot they are shooting, Jared, 30, 38%. They, I, from, from three point. I'm not saying they need to get to 50 because that's that's lofty, but I, I want to get close. I want I want it to maybe be like 45. Um, if if this team wants to penetrate the tournament, if they want to show up to the tournament and make Sweet 16 or better, then they they need to do better than that from three point line. Yep. All right. Uh, moving on here. So Ohio State's next games here. Uh, just looking to see when what days are. All right. So this week we have uh, Ohio State heading on over to Rutgers. This um, what is it? The ninth. So this Wednesday they are heading to Rutgers. Seven o'clock tip off, and then this Saturday they're heading up to Ann Arbor. Yeah. This Let's Saturday go. at six o'clock. Kyle, what's your, and like, we're not doing a full preview or full breakdown, so I'm, I'm not asking you to go into insane detail here, but mm-hmm. expectations for the next, what, three, four games? Honestly, these next three, four games, they should win, they sh- should be minimum, minimum next four games, they should be three and one minimum they should be three and one they play rutgers michigan minnesota and indiana now yeah now i'm i'm really hesitant and what kind of rutgers team are we going to see here are we are we going to see that rutgers team who just demolished michigan state over the weekend uh i think they beat michigan state 84 to 63 by 21 points by 21 points uh, I I think Ohio State would be able to take care of business at Rutgers, and Michigan. Michigan's just been just so ugh, this yeah. year. Like I I don't think highly of this of this team at all. They've they've looked bad. They they put up a good showing against Purdue uh, a couple of days ago, but yeah, I just don't really like this Michigan team this year. Uh, but Kabuto says, and they're there. I, I, I'm taking some crap for my Wheeler comment um, down in the chat. Uh, if you're glue guy, which is he, uh, Wheeler, he's calling like the glue guy, which is like, you know, the mm-hmm. cohesive, like staple paperclip, whatever member of the team. Right. Which I think is accurate. I think that's a very accurate description. Um, he says, if your glue guy is your second best, yikes. You want your first best player, your second best best player, and then your glue guy. And Kabuto, I agree with you. 
which is why I'm saying if Ohio State wants to go deep into the tournament, they need a second player to step up, be the second scorer, be an all-around player. If that's, if that's what they want to do, if they want to make an impressive move in the Big Ten tournament and the in the big NCAA tournament, Wheeler can't be the second best player. But right now he might be based mostly on consistency. Mm-hmm. I want Brenham or someone to take that away from him. Because while I do think maybe he's the second most important, second most consistent, dare I say the second best player on the team right now, there's a whole lot of people vying for those roles, vying for those spots. Like it's not, it's not like there's some huge drop off. Yeah. Zed key, I think is a, is a great answer. I, Kyle Young, I think his his medical slash injury situation is is limiting for him. Um, Zed Key, again, like Brenham, if he can increase his consistency, then we can talk. Well, Arns is Arns. We, we've 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 already had our Arns conversation for this podcast. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, Buckeye Esquire says maybe the caveat to our rotating second best score situation is that it can't be Wheeler for it to be a good night. He can shoot. He doesn't. I don't think he sees his. I don't think he sees that as the role for himself. Uh, I just that that's not the role he envisions himself in. He can score. But I think you're right. I don't think you want him to be the second highest scorer on the team. I, I think that's prop. Yeah, I, I think you're. I think you're correct. You know, no, no, I wasn't. I wasn't disagreeing with you, Buckeye Esquire. I think you're. I think you're dead on. Yeah. All right, Jared. I, I think that is it for today's episode. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to continue to take some crap for the Wheeler thing, but again, when I say he's the second best. That's not the way you want it to be. (laughs) If I disagree with Esquire, he will counter Sue. Yeah. Oh, and and yeah, no, no, no. But Buckeye Esquire, we aren't disagreeing. For the record, we aren't, we aren't disagreeing. Yeah, it's, I'm saying that's the way it is right now. And that that way, and that it can't be that way if Ohio State wants success. Um, the, um, yeah, uh, the Kyle, that's it. Uh, come Patreon discord. Does not matter? No one li- listens or watches the basketball episodes anyway? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Kyle, uh, what do you have in Kyle's corner? Um, uh, didn't mention it would have made sense if we talked about this in, uh, the other episode, but the, um, Oh, what is it called? The Senior Bowl. Senior Bowl happened, and I don't know how many people watched it. I didn't, but uh, <laughs> uh, I've been reading about uh, Tyreek Smith and Haskell Garrett um, contributed pretty well in the in the Senior Bowl. Uh, I I think it's it's just going to help them out with their their draft um, their draft stock there. I think um, I think it was. Uh, Tyreek Smith, yeah, Tyreek Smith ended up getting a sack in that game there. Uh, but yeah, I'd be really excited to see where they where they fall out, fall into for this NFL draft. Yeah, and Kyle, the Pro Bowl is I I think hap- is the Pro Bowl is happening right now, isn't it? Not that yeah, I, I don't care either. It's the worst of all of the All Star games it by is. far, and I and I and I, I I don't care. It's fine. Yeah, they pretty they much. Just, yeah, they pretty much should do seven on sevens. They, they really I would should. actually love to watch like no pads. I here's the thing. Remember the quarterback challenge. Yep. Does anyone remember the quarterback challenge? Is that just is that just for us old guys in the room? Um, I would much rather watch like NFL skills competition with 
like flag football, some seven on seven flag football. You you can't replicate actual NFL football at half speed. This is why the Pro Bowl sucks. Yeah. I, th- I think I saw I think I saw a video either it was last week or a couple of weeks ago where there was just there was one of those one of those years and they had a lot of just great quarterbacks throwing it. Like I think Brett Farr was in there and they were throwing it like 72 yards. And then somehow Jim Harbaugh was in there and he was excited to, to get it like exactly like 60 yards and everybody else was 70 or further out there. And he was just like ecstatic and everybody's like, really? (laughs) Yeah. Again, like, the Pro Bowl is a, is a joke because, like, you you can't you can't replicate fo- NFL level football at half speed. You just you can't. It's it's not a it's not a thing that you can fix. It's not a it's not a problem no. that has a solution to it, other than literally putting flags on them and doing some seven on seven stuff. Yeah, and don't and don't bring back the the beach, the beach. Uh, they did that too. once and never yep. did it again for a reason. Yep. For a reason, yep. All right, Jared, that is it. Go ahead and head us home here. Yeah, uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by another Cincinnati band. We're doing Cincinnati bands this week. The name of this band is Lung. Um, they are an interesting experience. I'm just letting you guys know right now. This is a, this is a, I'm going to read, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to read their own description from the band camp page because it's 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 a it's a unique experience. Lung is a powerhouse art punk electric cello and drums rock duo. A cello an electric cello fronted rock band. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We we did that one last week, Gangland. We did do that last week. We're we're more multiple than that. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Lung. <laughs>